Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today we have the Solar HX lithium ion phosphate 12.8 volt 100 amp mini battery here. Let's get started with the video. Welcome back to the channel. This time we'll talk about the Solar HX battery. It's a 100 amp hour mini battery, that's what they call it. But as you remember, I don't have one here, but the mini batteries have a little different, you know, size. One battery I want to compare it with is a Group 24 battery. And just placing the battery right next to it, you can see that it looks like the width seems to be the same. So this video is about the Solar Edge battery, not about lead time, even though whoop, up there is a video about the lead time battery, also a battery review. Group 24, and this one is called, the Solar Edge is called Mini. So why is it called Mini? Because it looks like it's not as mini as you expect, but Regardless, let's take a look on more specification and what's in the box. So the Solar H mini battery, I think it's very important to highlight it. It's not solar, it's Solar H X. And when I looked online, um, it's available on Amazon, of course, link in the description below. But um, the Amazon link, I think, doesn't work at the moment. So I'm linking um, the manufacturer website on this. And it does come with a product brochure. That's what I call it. It also comes with the terminal bolts up here. It also comes with some little protectors and of course nylon strap and then we have everything else. It's glued, it should be super sealed, right? So regardless, this is a battery review, so we'll look into the inside. Other than what you can see here, those are the dimensions. This is the weight and it does say that SolarAge has multiple batteries. So on the website, they highlight multiple other batteries as well. And it should be having a BMS overcharge, under voltage, overheating, overcurrent, short circuit protection, no under or no low temp protection. So that is something you should keep in mind. And I'm curious how it looks inside because I've seen a couple other reviews already and sorry about my delay that I wasn't able to post this earlier, get this done. So here it is, a little delayed, but regardless, um, the price I think at least looking at the website, looks pretty promising. What's interesting on all those websites, they always list it as way higher, like, I don't know, three, four, five, six hundred. And then they cross it off and then they put a lower price in it, which should indicate, hey, they just reduce it. To be honest, I've seen this so many times, every time I look for it and I think, this is a joke. They do it on their website, they do it on Amazon's website. I think it's just ridiculous and it just, you know, should cost you buying it quicker. Regardless, there will always be a deal. So for this battery, let's continue. I'm doing a capacity test, that's the next step. And then we'll do a teardown to see what's actually inside to understand what this battery can do. So let's continue with the capacity test. And if you're wondering where it is, right behind there. So hopefully that's the proof. Let's start with the capacity test and see how far we can get with this battery. And as you saw, I charged it just a couple of minutes before all the way up, so we're good to go. Fully charged battery, and here we have the load starting. So we are at 28, 29 amps, which, let's see how far we can get with this one. There we go, that's closer to the point 0.2C. Might increase over time a little bit, so that's good. We'll start with this one. I adjusted a current amperage going out of the battery. So we'll be back as soon as we're done with the capacity test and we'll see how much we are we're actually able to pull out of this battery.
Alrighty, you see it already. We have here down here 102 amp hours. Let's get into the low voltage disconnect and there it was. All right, after the capacity test is passed with 102 amp hours for this 100 amp hour advertised battery. This is the mini version again. Let's take it apart and let's see how it actually looks inside and what are the components. All right, we got it open and to my surprise, there is, let me turn it around this way, there is a very similar looking DALI lithium ion phosphate for S12 volt 100 amp hour BMS in here. And the way how this one is assembled, at least what I can see so far, I'll try to take it out in a minute. Just the way this is assembled, we have a six gauge negative wire and you have a seven gauge positive wire going to the terminal, covered here in a sleeve, in a plastic sleeve. And it is hydraulically crimped on the terminal, down the opposite, so that's good to see. And I'll try to get close into the cells and see how the BMS is mounted, because so far it looks very clean, it looks good, and there's nothing wrong with those BMS at all. It's just, they could have done it even smaller in a smaller housing. You, there's so much space up here, um, which makes it comfortable, but uh, that would have been maybe a totally different housing. So I would assume they just um, used a very default housing and put stickers on and put a stuff in and why not? I mean, that's that's a great way to do it and uh, to minimize the cost, right? Let me try to get it out and we'll see if we can see more. Okay, it's hard, but it will work. So we do have, have to make sure this is a epoxy board it looks like, and the BMS is actually screwed into the epoxy board and then glued also on the sides. And it's a pretty thick, um, here you might be able to see it from the side, it's red. There's a pretty thick aluminum plate underneath, so kind of a heat sink on the bottom. And on top there's also the DALI, typical um, kind of, sorry, didn't say DALI, maybe it's not, maybe reprinted, who knows. Um, but there's also a heat sink, and then we have to be mess underneath. We have the balance leads over here. We do have a temperature sensor over here on this side, going to the cells, they're tucked in on the side. And then we have the cells itself. And the cells itself look like this. So the seven gauge wire, positive goes over here. And the six gauge goes over here. So since it's a 100 amp hour BMS, but we only have a seven gauge wire over here, it might be tricky to get all the power through because keep that in mind, there's a six and a seven. I don't know why they use different sizes. Um, I cannot answer that question, but it is what it is. Let me try to go closer. What I've probably done is glue something on the bottom and we have this heat plastic tape or shrink around, so which kind of works as an insulator as well, which is not really good in general, keeping that, because it can poke through any time with those studs you can see. So let's see if I can get a closer look to that. So you might not be able to see this, let me zoom in, but I can see it. And I cannot scan those QR codes, nor can I read anything of them anymore. Uh, they. I would assume they might be used. I cannot confirm that, but uh, it looks, you know, well wired. It looks like it's well built, has this epoxy board in between, so it's kind of isolated down there. Uh, the vents are breathable, so they can still breathe. Uh, Everything is collected properly, it feels like, and there's a hydraulic crimp everywhere, uh, except for the small balance leads, but they well connected. So what's missing in a quality control perspective that at least you cannot see that, that they are marked and were tightened to spec when you look at those kind of things. But uh, we have a sticker on here which says 2023-9-26, I believe on all of those cells. You know, it works. Uh, it's a battery which passed the capacity test. It is well built together, I feel like. So let's do some uh, overheat testing with uh, the probe. Since this probe will also test the, oh you cannot see that, but since it's a probe will also test the low temperature cutoff here as well with the ice pack. And it's a super mess, but I'm pretty sure you understand what's going on. We're charging back in here, so it's hard to read probably. Let me get this a little closer so you see something. And we have the temperature probe over here dingling around. So high temp cutoff first. Let me get started on this one. And there it stopped charging. That is good to see. Let's see if it comes back. Since we don't have Bluetooth here, we cannot check the temperature on the app at all. 
but let's see how quick or if it does come back charging. And there it is back. Great. So the high temp cutoff does work. It does protect it. And let's see if we get any results just to see with the duster. And let's see if there's any cold temp at all. It's already freezing cold, but it doesn't even stop. Oh, great. Did you see that? A low temp cutoff. That was not advertised at all. At least on the website, I didn't see that. This is cool to see. Let's do it one more time. The duster. And there it is again. Nice. Let me get an ice pack. That is cool to see. Okay, let's see if we can do that again. But this time just with normal ice packs, uh, which are more human temperature wise. Let's stick to them here. Let's see. Oh yeah, nice. With the ice pack, what's happening, it's just slower getting to zero and reacting and telling the BMS, hey, we reach below zero. Because those ice packs are not far, super far below zero, I would say, but it's, you know, cold enough for sure. And they did a job, nice. And there it is back up. This is amazing to see in such a budget battery, battery. Uh, that it does actually come with low temp cutoff. I don't know why they don't advertise that. It's always the possibility when you don't see the configuration and when it does actually, you know, trigger with the cold temp, um, that it might be just set up completely wrong. So let's say it's at minus 20 Celsius or whatever set up, that battery would have already had some damage as soon as you t try to charge it, obviously. So that is great to see and I'm so happy is happening and more and more. So that means the manufacturers are actually listening, it looks like, or on accident putting in some BMS like that. So either way, in this case, nice. That's all about the solar I did not talk about the product pressure or manual very much, but it is very, very light, very slim. It has probably six pages. And I think the most interesting part would be this page, page four, which talks about Series in parallel connection. Um, it does not say how many, if it is 4P, 4S, or whatever the configuration is, I guess. And uh, the other interesting page is probably here, this table with charging and discharging voltage over here. And then of course, the, we know those uh, performance characteristics of lithium ion phosphate batteries. It did pass the capacity test, so this is amazing to see. This is a mini, you know, it's a mini housing, more like a, Group 24, a little higher, I would say. At least it looks like when you compare the two batteries I had at the beginning of the video in here. And still, it does, you know, have the 100 amp hours. If it's price-wise, exactly what you're looking for. Maybe those are the dimensions you're looking for. And also, it's advertised on the website that you can orientate it whatever direction you want to. So if that's the case, this might be your friend. It does come with a not advertised cold temp cutoff, which is amazing, and a high temp cutoff, at least at the time being or time of making this video. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'm happy that you watched this video. In case you want to subscribe to the channel, I'm more than happy that I will continue to work with uh, your support. Thanks for watching. Cheers.